What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and the series. My name is College Sports Revived and we are here again with the College Hoops 2K Legacy Mode series featuring the Fordham Rams and our main man, Coach Carter. It's awesome to see this calendar screen again, guys. So happy to be back for some real live gameplay again. Finally back home and ready to tip off season four, the most anticipated season of this series. We're fresh off the most successful year of not only Coach Carter's tenure here at the head of Fordham University's basketball club, but also in the history of Ram Hoops. As after two harsh seasons to open up his legacy mode here in the Bronx, Coach Carter and his five pivotal seniors soared their way to a conference championship loss and for the first time since joining the 8-10 and 91, the Rams went dancing and earned a nine seed in March Madness. The job is not done though, as Michigan State dealt us a devastating triple overtime loss to end our third season and now Coach Carter fields the youngest team in the entire series. We're gonna see three freshman starters, including his own flesh and blood Damian Carter at the point the highest rated freshman ever in the series pat park he'll start at the three and at center will debut lloyd hicks who led all high school players in rebounding then off the bench we signed two more former players in timo cruz who looks to add some bench scoring and finally junior battle makes it three ex richmond richmond high schoolers that coach carter brought over from his days there but don't forget Nick Jallo, an Oregon State transfer who will have to sit out a year due to NCAA rules but I love his slashing ability Lots of talent on file. Without a doubt, this team has incredible upside together, but will they be able to gel and avoid the major growing pains we see from young college teams? There is no seniors on this team. Well, a great way to grow up quick at the college level is some tournament action. That's right, Fordham was invited to the preseason NIT, hosted by the Carrier Dome, and no doubt, thanks to their 21 season last year, that'll come in handy. And we'll be taking on the Central Connecticut State Blue Devils out of the Northeast Conference to open up our year. But before we get into the year four opener, we're going to jump into the annual season preview show to check out the preseason top 25 and projected All-American lists where we do see a familiar face from the A-10. Hope this hypes you up even more for the new season of Fordham Hoops. Welcome to 2K Sports Studios. I'm Greg Gumbel with Clark Kellogg. We're here with the 2K Sports season preview show. Here are the top five teams in the nation as we head into the season. The North Carolina Tar Heels come in as the number one ranked team, followed by Michigan State, Duke, UNLV, and Connecticut. What do you think of the top five teams going into the year, Clark? Sometimes the top players in the nation and the best teams in the nation aren't necessarily together at the top of the pole. But going into this season, we have some of the absolute best players playing on the marquee teams. That's really exciting to me, Greg. North Carolina is in the catbird seat to start the season, sitting pretty in the number one spot. They've got a whole crew of high school Mr. Basketballs on this team. A team is usually happy to land one Mr. Basketball, but with the number they have, this could be a golden era of basketball success at this university. Here's the next group of teams in our preseason top 25. What do you think of this group, Clark? With such a long season ahead of us, it's almost impossible to put a finger on just who the contenders and pretenders are from this set of teams. But that doesn't mean we won't try. How about this list? The difference between this group and the previous group is depth, plain and simple. They can match up with anybody at the start of the game, but due to a short bench, they just won't be able to keep up through the end. The Charlotte 49ers, the number 19 team, are also worth keeping an eye on. They lost a big piece of their team with the departure of last season's leading rebounder. It's going to have to be a group effort on the board for a little while until some of the younger big men get the confidence to hold their own game in and game out. There were a lot of coaching changes this offseason, and we'll tell you all about them. Here are the coaches who made a change this offseason. Some very interesting moves on the list, to say the least. We've come to the part of the show when we look at the top players in the nation and unveil the list of our preseason All-Americans. There before you are the five first-team All-Americans as we begin the season, and what a list it is. Munir is the first player on the list for good reason. Feels like this guy's been playing college basketball forever. This will be his fourth year as a starter. But I still don't take him for granted, and I think this will be his best season of all of them. Turek is simply a spectacular player. He's a former high school Mr. Basketball out of. He was Vermont's Mr. Basketball in high school. He was the best of the best in his state, but now he wants to prove that he's the best in the nation. He has the skills to do it, 
So we'll keep him on the watch list. Sam is one of my favorite players in the country. He was a monster under the boards last season. He came away with an average of six rebounds a game. That's just another aspect of his game that I expect to get better this season, and that's frightening to even think about. Barlow is going to play a huge role in his team's success. He can make things happen on the basketball court thanks to his unique ability to read and understand defenses while most players are just trying to come up with their next move. He's three steps ahead of the game. Perry is going to have his own personal highlight reel by the end of this season. He's back for another go after leading his team in scoring a year ago. If he improves his offense even a little bit, he'll be one of the deadliest scorers in the country. As we move to the second team All-Americans, we can see there's no shortage of talent with this group. They're all elite players with the potential to dominate the game. Glad you could join us for the 2K Sports Season Preview. We hope you enjoy all the college hoops action ahead. So long, Some everyone. pretty cool storylines entering Season 4. We see the, de the defending champs, the Texas Longhorns, they come in at 18th in the nation. We saw two A-10 teams enter the season ranked, with St. Joe's clocking in at 15 and Charlotte entering at 19. And we also saw them highlight the best player in the conference, DeAndre Perry, who's first team All-American in the preseason and shocked the country by returning to school for his senior year after an Elite Eight run with his 49ers. That was definitely the biggest news of the entire offseason. And we're going to see if it helps or hurts his NBA draft stock in the future. But welcome to season four, everyone. The Rams face the Central Connecticut State Blue Devils to open up the season, a game where we're favored by double digits, which is nice. We definitely needed a get right game like this to ease our many underclassmen in the gauntlet. Austin Kanakpa is the top returning scorer for the Blue Devils. The Queens native posted 10.5 points and just under six rebounds as a sophomore season ago. Well, I hope you guys are ready. We're back in the same gym that we actually opened this series with a couple years ago. Back in season one, we played Syracuse on the road to open up the legacy mode where we lost by 15. But we're a very different team now in a very different place. It's kind of crazy to walk through these doors again with so many new faces and a lot more bright of a future than we thought we were going to have a couple years ago. Remember in that year one team only won six games, but we've come a long way. And we're gonna finally debut our five new freshmen. We're ready to get things going with Lloyd Hicks, with the seven foot one freshman beast winning the tip out of the gates. And we're gonna watch the first two possessions of each team. So Central Connecticut State playing a zone here from the jump. We'll see Kaya Hendry, our top returning scorer, Damian Carter, elbow jumper, trying to find the soft spot in the zone to no avail. So now we're gonna see what we have cooking on defense here. We're gonna go man to man out of the jump as Coach Carter so often does. This was a place we needed to improve the last season as Kerry Leak will secure the first bucket of this game for the Central Connecticut State Blue Devils. But yeah, we definitely need to be better on defense last year as Pat Park throws it inside. He tries to go off a screen, but not going to be very successful against a 2-3 zone like this. Come on, a lot of congestion. We got to space this thing out. Damian Carter kicks it out. It's Kai Hendry for three. Very high expectations for Kaya, especially after his subpar Michigan State game last year. That's putting it very lightly. Uh, Kai Hendry was actually first team All-American in terms of freshman as Lloyd Hicks secures his first basket as a Fordham Ram. Like this, nobody checked out and he just runs up and tips it in over Austin Kanakpa. Just not enough resistance in there. Central Connecticut State doesn't really have much height nor a true big man who can match up, so I'm expecting Hicks to have a field day here in his first college game. But back to Kai Hendry, who I was talking about a little bit, that Michigan State game, the triple overtime loss, he really disappointed. I believe he was one for 10 shooting, if I remember correctly, as Damian Carter records his second steal of the opening minutes and his first college field goal. Playing for his pops, we heard in the movie of Coach Carter that he had always played for his dad, so it's no surprise that after a couple years with Coach Carter at UT Martin and then Fordham, he wants to get back under his dad's wing here, and he's already making plays here, trying to set up another teammate, Pat Park, the highest rated freshman ever of this series, a top 50 prospect, Pat Park with the spin move, open things up baseline as 
the defender just too much room there for him on the baseline so Fordham holding the slim lead but the Blue Devils coming to play a little bit here in the early opening minutes Floyd Hicks good job closing things down in the interior as he grabs his third board Ken Kai Hendry in the opening uh, open court trying to rim run a little bit checking in though we see Timo Cruz knocking down his first three in his first attempt as a college player Timo Cruz had some off the court issues obviously at Fordham but I feel like he got himself in the right direction after coach Carter straightened him out a little bit and opened his eyes to a better future as he used to always say 8-0 run for Fordham opens it up to a 10 point game as we go inside high post that's exactly how you beat this zone nice extra pass Cruz to Black as Dustin Black wants to build off of his pretty awesome sophomore year a coach's dream Dustin Black's become he's had many different roles in this team over the years from six man to injury replacement point guard he's done a great job in every role he's been in he's never complained even as Damian Carter comes in as a freshman starting over him now some blacks one of our few upperclassmen and he's become a leader on and off the court through his actions gotta love those silent leaders every locker room needs them under six to play now junior battle he explodes baseline as he checks in in relief of Lloyd Hicks nice pass there as they let him have the baseline all to himself Junior Battle is also someone I'm very hyped for as we needed some big man depth a lot in this series and he can provide that. A freshman who can bounce and who can rebound as he secures his third off the bench right here. Almost tipped away but Kai Hendry corrals it, beats his man, nice pass inside, Bennett Pinkala gets in on the offensive fun as we are almost doubling the Blue Devils score. And yes, Bennett Pincalo, one of the few returning players from last year. Him and Kai Hendry, both only sophomores, but they're going to have to be the leaders with three freshmen also sharing the floor with them. Yep, this is not a very experienced team. I think you're starting to realize it now that we're finally in the games. I mean, we can talk about it all we want preseason, but now we're starting to see it tangibly on the court. But these guys are still playing it with, without a, a hitch there as Kai Hendry gets the bounce there, moving without the ball. As there is Junior Battle making a nice pass. Kai Hendry with 11 points to lead all scores. As we head into the second half of action. 20 point game so Fordham can just kind of coast here. Run their sets and continue to build chemistry. Damian Carter nice pass inside. Patrick Park 8 points here. As the freshman open things up with a very nice quarter both on offense and defense. 49 to 28 as the Blue Devils looking for any way to score some points here as they finally get to 30 on the game. Uh, that was the first time we really relinquished anything inside with Lloyd Hicks and Bennett Pinkala being tough nuts to crack inside as there's a nice pass and yet another assist by Damian Carter in his debut game. Lloyd Hicks with a three-point play. You got to foul him hard or don't foul him all. He's way too strong down there. Seven foot one, 275 pounds as a true freshman. And now Kai Hendry gets busy right in off the inbound. He left that man on an island. Look at this. Kari Lee comes out. The big man. Just not the matchup you want. It's hard whenever you're a team uh, from a small conference like CCSU. They just don't have anybody to match up with whether it's man or zone. So Fordham has had very little resistance on finding open shots and doing whatever they want on offense. 65 to 38. Only a matter of uh, time before we see the second strikers come in as Pat Park knocks down a shot with a foot on the line. Yet another jumper goes. 15 for the freshman in his first ever college game. The Philly boy coming up big. And he is... Definitely lighting things up here in his first college game. But now we got five bench players out on the floor. We got Dustin Black, Timo Cruz, and now Craig Stone enters the game after redshirting last year. A redshirt freshman. He'll be number six uh, in terms of freshman. Obviously, he redshirted last year. But yeah, he he adds to the numbers. Yet another guy who's playing his first minutes as a college player in this one. So it's all smiles here for Fordham and company as Coach Carter begins his fourth year at the range of the program 1 and 0 78 to 55 the rams win convincingly and it was great to see kai hendry put to bed the michigan state game last year in the tournament as the freshman all-american last year puts up 22 and four threes along with four assists as his first ever game really with the keys to the offense he's going to be our main guy going forward 
Damian Carter in his first game as a freshman, six assists and one made three, three steals as well. Pat Park put up 15, four, seven of 12 shooting. Bennett Pinkala had his only field goal go in. And then Lloyd Hicks, 11 and 12, a double-double as a freshman newbie. Pretty crazy to see there, but I think this is only the, the floor for him. Dustin Black had eight, made both of his threes. And then Timo Cruz with nine points. Junior Battle, halfway to a double-double almost in his limited minutes. And Craig Stone, who redshirted last year, got a bucket in his first college game. Overall, just all smiles for Fordham and all these new players that are entering their first year as college players. So we got a game under the belts of this extensive freshman class and all of them played well. It was good to see. And while beating up on inferior teams is fun, it won't make you any better though. That's where Notre Dame comes into focus. One of the weaker teams from the Big East, but a Big East team nonetheless. This is the first test for our young and upcoming bunch. The Fighting Irish took care of uh, their tune-up game pretty handily as well. They beat Siena 71-59 and now stand in the path for the next round of the NIT. Winning this game would send us to the semifinals. And Lloyd Hicks was able to feast against the team lacking a paint presence, but things would be a lot tougher against the Irish. With 6-7 Stephen Biley and 6-6 Clint Carter bringing plenty of defense down low while also scoring a combined 32 points against Siena. This team also blocked five shots in that win and will make us work a lot harder to get things going on offense while being a pretty good shooting team on offense in their own right. So our first test is now underway up four to two here in the early stages as uh, Coach Carter's son Damien will turn it over here but we immediately get it right back with Kai Hendry applying the pressure on Kendrick Beckwith the two guard and now we look to build on our early lead. Great pass inside. Two defenders in the path. No avail though. No stopping Lloyd Hicks there as he begins the game with two free throws and now his first field goal. Notre Dame with the first three of the contest though. You got to guard these shooters that they got. They'll try another one. This is Josh Hussein who will make two in a row to give the Irish the early advantage. Up ahead though, we're breaking this press. Lloyd Hicks goes into the post and that's just too easy. That's number 31. That's Clint Carter on an island. He's a good defender, but he's only 6'6", so they're going to have to bring multiple players to get in his path. 16-12 game now. Pat Park is a little bit long as he's struggling here in his second college game. Kendrick Beckwith on the break will knock down the layup. And that'll finally put an end to a pretty cold spell for both teams. The offense got going pretty quick. It was a pretty fast played game through the first five minutes. But then the next five, lots of be desired on the offensive end. But then Micah Darden will leave Dustin Black in the dust a little bit. You don't see him get burned like that much. But perhaps Dustin Black missing a lot of his sophomore year he played great but he missed a lot of his sophomore year with that broken ankle so and he also missed the tournament too so perhaps a little bit step slow there as he uh, gets back to 100 percent 16 apiece now chen lee also missed time with injuries last year as well but he looks to find the brock and he gets it here at the elbow puts a shoulder into the man guarding him that's number 14 uh siobhan ashley who has no answer for him down low 16 to 18 Fordham with the ball and the advantage Pat Park checks back in we got Dustin Black on the perimeter as Chen Lee maybe he's not done yet he'll roll and he'll find a way to put in two more he actually played awesome in his first game back um so Chen Lee missed the last I believe month and a half of his uh, sophomore year but he was able to return just in time for the game against Michigan State and he was one of our better players in that one uh Damian Carter once again, having some trouble with this Notre Dame pressure, but Bennett Pinkala spin move inside, absorbs the bump from Stephen Biley and puts in two more. Bennett Pinkala snuck his way on to first team all-conference as a freshman, well, freshman all-conference, I should say, and he actually had a pretty, you know, he got, kind of got lost in the shuffle a little bit with all the firepower we had on offense last year, but I think he still played very well overall, but he's got to improve on his free throw shooting. He misses one there, and he was by far our worst free throw shooter at, I believe, 51% last year. He's only making about half his attempts right now. Hopefully, that got better over the offseason. Inside again. Finally, Lloyd, <laughs> Lloyd Hicks is off the mark. I'm almost surprised when he, when he misses. That's how good he's been so far as a freshman, but again, running the break, that's been... 
the Colin Carr for the Irish down the stretch here. But let's see if we can do the same thing. Lloyd Hicks, nice little baby J. He's got 10 here in the early goings. Well, uh, before halftime, at least. Nice pass there by Kai Hendry, who we're going to talk about more in just a little bit. 12 seconds to go. Damian Carter with zero assists with seven seconds to go. A far cry from the six he threw on opening day. But he does alertly find Lloyd Hicks in the middle of the paints with a mismatch. So two more points for Lloyd Hicks as he's got a dozen in only his second college game against a big East opponent. 28-26 at the half. He's your game's top scorer and top rebounder. Very impressive. And he's doing it in basically every way you can think of. When we recruited Lloyd Hicks last episode, I was shocked to see how good his ratings were on offense. I knew he was going to have the rebounding. I knew he was going to be a great defender and rim uh, protector. But I did not expect him to be so good from the low post as a true freshman. That was just a gift for sure. However, it wouldn't take long for the Fighting Irish to find the equalizer. That's the Southpaw Quinton Draper from the top of the key, who had four blocks on opening day. But there's his first field goal of this game. But it's, he's actually not the most prevalent player on the floor who's lacked a field goal up to this point. Kaya Hendry finally gets into the scoring column as we retake the lead in a matter of seconds. Yeah, he played awesome, over 20 points in his first game as a sophomore, but he's struggling here against Notre Dame. But Lloyd Hicks, great job closing it down on the interior as Damian Carter looks for assist number two. Bennett Pinkala over to Lloyd Hicks and then Pat Park, who also has lacked a field goal up to this point. But back-to-back -back assists for Lloyd Hicks, who continues to fill it up in every single category you can think of. He's now got three dimes on the game, and this will be an awesome one as well. A beautiful find on the baseline by Damian Carter in close quarters. Yet another jumper there by Pat Park, who looks to finally get it going. And so does Fordham. They open things up a little bit. Despite their two best offensive threats not playing that well, they do have the lead, but there's the uh, elbow isolation, the toughest place to defend in isolation on the floor. Yeah, that's the elbow. And Notre Dame scores five in a row, and they can make it six here with Quentin Draper knocking down the free throw. So Irish obviously going nowhere. Seven and a half to go. Dustin Black checking in along with Chen Lee, who's got five to this point. But he gives it up to Damian Carter. Pump fake. Nice dish. Junior battle. Again, Damian Carter is assisting one of his teammates. If you include the one he had at the end of the first half, that's four assists in this half alone. And Junior Battle's got yet another bucket. He's been playing really well in the opening minutes as a college player. But wow, what a pass there by Quentin Draper. As there is Micah Dart in the point guard flashing his awesome finishing ability. 5.53 on the game clock. Looks like this one could be a pretty entertaining one. And I know you guys missed these close games. I did too. Darden missing. And then Timo Cruz soars over many players for the board. Opening up for Damian Carter to knock down yet another three. That's his third triple of the game. And he has not missed at all. Four for five in the early stages of his college career. As he was one for two against Central Connecticut State. We didn't recruit Damian Carter for his rebounding as they bring a double to Lloyd Hicks. It's Kai Hendry who hesitates because he struggled today. He'll try it. Uh, it's no avail, but Bennett Pincala cleaning up the mess, retaking the lead. But Damian Carter's three-point shooting has definitely been one of the earlier storylines or one of the better storylines here in the early stages of Season 4. Like I said, we didn't recruit him for his three-point shooting, more so his playmaking and defense, but... Hey, he's 4-5 or five early on, so we'll take him when we can get him as Beckwith takes the lead. Kendrick Beckwith, speaking of three-point shooting, he only had six points in the opening day game against Siena, but he's played a pivotal role in giving the Irish the lead. They're not going away. 2.33 left to go. Kai Hendry inside. Lloyd Hicks out muscling uh, Stephen Biley there underneath the cup. Hendry's finding a way to contribute. He's got five assists despite the struggles from the field. 57-56, that's what it's all about. Finding ways to contribute. If your jumper isn't falling, you'll find a way if you're a good enough player. And that's exactly what Kai Hendry's done. So 57-56, still after a stop. Time on our side. We're taking advantage of the clock. Damian Carter, one of the most high IQs on the court, even as a freshman. He'll take his time. He'll give it to Hendry. Crossover inside the heart of that 2-3 zone. Hendry with field goal number two. 
and it comes at just the right time. He's only two for nine, but he delivers when we need it. Three-point game. Bethwick's been hot. Kai Hendry, he stops him in his tracks. Over to Draper, who's hit a couple perimeter J's today. This one's off, and then it's blocked by Pinkala, and Bailey tried to save it, but it's off his hand. So, ref points to the other side of the floor. Fordham ball with a three-point lead. Let's see if we can finally get rid of these Irish. 20-second disparity between the two clocks. Here we go. We're back to these close games. I know how much you guys like them. I miss them. I miss this thrill. Pat Park, elbow iso. He's backing down his man. Does he have the confidence to take the shots? He'll try to kick it out. It's tipped away. Beckwith with the steal, and he goes full extension to grab it. It looks like it's going to be a jump ball, but the Notre Dame Fighting Irish call a timeout. The ref gives them the timeout despite Hendry having two hands on the orange, just like Beckwith did. But as you can see at the top of your screen, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish coach burns one, and the refs give it to him. That's their final timeout of the game, and with 21 and a half seconds left, a little bit of controversy here. I personally think it should have been the possession arrow, but they give him the benefit of the doubt. So the Irish will inbound on their side of the floor. 21 and a half ticks left. We just need one more stop to go 2-0 and and advance the semis of the NIT. Draper to Darden for the tie, and it just rims out. Will Fordham hold on? It's going to come down to Damian Carter, who's already one of the better free throw shooters on the roster day one. He made a lot of free throws just like his dad at Richmond. Let's see if he can come in in the clutch. One and one. Damian Carter gets the front end he's the hero in only his second college game 63 to 59 will be your final as fordham holds on for their first nail-biting win as a team here in season four you can't ask for anything better than this a four-point win to send us to the semis and how about that point guard to center connection, Damian Carter with 13-4, the game ceiling free throws, and three for three from the three-point line as he improves to four for five through his first two college games from downtown. Kai Hendry put the pieces together there at the end of the game a little bit. He came up big, especially on defense there. Pat Park with eight points. Pincalo delivered whenever his number was called upon, although one for five free throws, got to get better. But how about Lloyd Hicks with 18-12 in a block, doing it on both ends, stealing the show there. Man, this kid has the potential to be one of the best players we have ever seen on this channel. Two college games under his belt, two double-doubles, and two wins. All you can say is this is the perfect way to hop back into the series Oh man, what a day guys, what a time to be a Fordham Rams fan and a Coach Carter supporter, but we're going to check out the other couple regions to see who will be making up that semifinal round and uh, uh, championship to be, so we'll see in the B bracket, Ohio State loses early, so it'll be Southeast Missouri State in the championship, it's great to see the Buckeyes not only disappointing me in real life, but also virtually as well. One of our biggest rivals from the UT Martin series, Memphis, they'll be in the semifinals as well. We see TCU take down the 16th ranked Stanford Cardinals, so the Horn Frogs and Jamie Dixon will be playing. And so here it is. Memphis blows out Southeast Missouri State 82 to 53, which means it'll be Coach Carter against Jamie Dixon in the Carneseca Arena for the St. John's Red Storm play. Very historic arena indeed. And, yep, it's going to be a battle of unbeatens. So yet another test faces Coach Carter. The 4-0 Texas Christian Horn Frogs against the 2-0 Fordham Rams. What a way to open up Season 4. And this is just the beginning. I got a lot more gameplay that I got saved up for you guys. And I'm already working on editing. So I'm going to try to get these episodes up, up rapid fire, make up for lost time. I'm obviously, this isn't the only thing going on right now. I've also got the virtual March Madness simulation. If you want to check that out, I got a playlist down below and on my channel. But I'm going to try to prioritize this series as we're getting back into it. I know how much you guys missed Fordham. I did too, so it's great to be back. And I'm going to keep grinding, guys. I'm going to get through Season 4 and see these freshmen start to shine. So we'll see if we can win this NIT TCU next time and potentially Memphis in the championship if we can knock off the Horn Frogs. 
can't wait for that and i hope to see you then guys so hope you guys have a great night really appreciate you stopping by the channel today and we have a lot more coming in the future so this college sports arrives signing out have a great night thanks guys thanks for your patience great to be back and i'll see you next time hopefully peace guys